I'm Ashley and this is Sincerely Sews. Today I'm going to show you how I took an old thrifted sweater and turned it into a devilish balaclava. Let's get started! Balaclavas have been growing in popularity over the last few years and they're exploding everywhere for 2022. There's a lot of tutorials online that show you how to knit or crochet your own balaclava, and I've even seen a few sewing tutorials starting to pop up. While I was working on this project, one of my favorite YouTubers, Blueprint DIY, also made a tutorial on how to make balaclavas. Their technique shows how to make a balaclava that's unlined, so it's a little bit more for fashion, but I will leave a link down below so you can check out their tutorial too. When I was deciding how to make my balaclava, I knew that I wanted to make something that would be warm and fashionable and a bit eye-catching. I live in Michigan where we get a lot of snow, so I definitely needed to make sure my ears stayed warm. While balaclavas have been gaining in popularity recently, I was curious to find out where the name balaclava actually comes from. I found out that the name balaclava comes from a battle fought during the Crimean War. The British soldiers fighting against the Russians were used to cold weather, but due to a supply ship sinking and a few other logistical issues, they were left without the proper winter gear that they needed. When their family back home got word that the soldiers did not have the proper winter equipment, they went full force knitting balaclavas to send to the troops. Later in the 1880s, and again in World War II, balaclavas were worn during war. They were especially popular during World War II when there was a conscious effort for knitters to make socks and balaclavas for the troops. Today we see them all over runways and they're especially exploding for 2022, so I'll show you how I made mine. I first made a balaclava pattern that I thought would fit my head and then made that out of scrap fabric. So after that was a success, I took that pattern and then traced it out onto paper to create the pattern for this balaclava. I used a ruler to measure out and then draw the peaked forehead part that I wanted to add to this balaclava. It was a little bit of trial and error, but here you can see what the basic pattern looked like. Next I grabbed one of these friction fine liners. I absolutely love these pens because you can draw on fabric and then erase them with the heat of your iron. I use these all the time and you can find them linked in my Amazon storefront. Next I took my pattern and laid it out on some polar fleece that I had left over from another project. And then I cut out the shape. You need two of these, one for each side of the balaclava. This polar fleece is going to end up being the lining for my balaclava and the recycled sweater is going to be the external part. Here's what it looks like and then when I ratched the right sides together and sewed around the curves first. Leave the face and the neck hole open. I used 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances when sewing my balaclava. Here I'm sewing the seam that goes over the curve of the top of the head. When I was done sewing these curved seams, I snipped into the seam allowance, being careful not to cut over my stitching line. These snips are going to allow the seam to open up wide and lay flat. I repeated the same snips right along the curve at the top of the head. You could cut notches in here too if you wanted to, to eliminate extra bulk. Then with a warm iron set to synthetics, I gave the seams a little bit of a press so that they'll stay right where I want them to be. I found that using my tailor's ham helped me get into the curve. Here's what it looks like when it's all sewn. Now it's time to look at the sweater. This is the sweater that I thrifted for this project. I really loved that it was pink and that had little flecks of color throughout all of the yarn. So I laid out my sweater and treated it just like it was fabric and placed my pattern down and then cut it out. I would say that the most important thing to pay attention when you're just cutting into a sweater is to not handle these pieces too much. If you handle them too much, the sweater is going to start to unravel and your piece will start shrinking as the bits of yarn fall off. So after I got those cut out, I laid them right sides together and then just like the polar fleece pieces, I stitched around the upper curve and then the center front neck curve as well. When stitching these pieces together, I went slowly and made sure to keep pushing the fabric down underneath my presser foot, that way none of the loops of the knitting got caught. I also lowered the amount of pressure that was on my presser foot so that it wouldn't stretch this knitting out too much. Here I'm just using my regular lock stitch machine. Here's what my two halves look like and now it's time to join them. I turned the sweater part right side out and then stuck it inside of the polar fleece. The next step is going to be to sew around the face hole, and so I decided that it would be a good idea to pin these together because the fabric of the sweater is already starting to come unfrayed. 
When sewing, I looked at the polar fleece because I know that that piece is going to retain most of its shape and not stretch out too much or become unfrayed. So match the sweater up to the polar fleece and you will be good to go when you start your sewing. I just eased the sweater into the polar fleece. Now we're ready to sew the face hole and leave the bottom open so we can turn it. Here I'm sewing the face hole with the sweater on the bottom because this was less likely to get caught on my presser foot as I was sewing. Here I'm trimming the excess fabric away from the peak of the front of the face hole. This is going to help it turn and not be too bulky. When you're doing this step, make sure that you don't cut over your original stitching line. Now I've turned it right side out and I've used a stick to help poke out the peak. I'm loving how this is turning out already. The next step is to hem the bottom. I folded each of these sides under about half an inch and then I pinned them in place all the way around. As I was pinning these two layers together, I was making sure that the sweater was sticking out about a quarter of an inch past the polar fleece. That way when you're wearing the balaclava, the lining isn't sticking out. And now it's time to sew. As I sewed this part, I followed right along the edge of the polar fleece, again with the knitting on the bottom. I think it's a little okay to stitch this with the fabric stretched so that when you're going to put your balaclava on, you know it's going to fit over the top of your head without worrying about the thread breaking. I also wanted to make sure that the lining didn't end up peeking out at the face hole, so after I finished hemming the balaclava, I decided that I would also top stitch around the face hole using pretty much the same method. Instead of pinning this, I just rolled it back with my fingers a little bit, and then I stitched it following the edge of the polar fleece, just like I did when I was hemming. To make the horns, I sewed around the triangular pieces using a quarter inch seam allowance. When I was done with that, I clipped the curves of the horn shape so that it would allow me to turn it inside out better. I cut little triangles around the tip to eliminate bulk. Then I turned it right side out, and I used a stick to help me poke out those pointy parts. Then I turned the raw edges under about a quarter of an inch and gave them a good press. To stuff the horns, I used a little bit of the fluff that was left over from my sweater. There was plenty of extra yarn to cut up too and just shoved it right in there with a stick to stuff the rest of the horn. To attach the horn to the balaclava, I just sewed it by hand using a quick whip stitch. And here's how this devilish balaclava turned out. I cannot wait to wear this this winter. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and on TikTok at Sincerely Sews.